Alright, as promised guys, we're gonna introduce an off-meta deck. So in this video, we're gonna introduce Mega Knight Battle Ram. So Mega Knight Ram deck, uh, of course the traditional one is the Pekka Ram, but in this um, video, we're gonna show you that Mega Knight Ram is also pretty viable in this meta. So I got this deck in a 12, uh, from a 12 win GC, just uh, based on Royal API. So you can see on the right, um, in this, we actually have the choice of using Skeleton Dragons or Baby Dragons. But because uh, we play a lot of games on the mini account, we can see we don't have a Max Skelly Dragons. But uh, we're gonna show one replay on the rock as well that when I beat Pekka Ram with this deck, we use um, Skelly Dragons. All right, so we're gonna see you guys in our first replay. Okay, we're actually playing against a Log Big deck. So this one has been uh, pretty common in this current meta. It's uh, with a double barrel now, and then they have Princess instead of Delivery. So he throws a barrel pretty early, and luckily it was at the side. So the Royal Ghost does a pretty nice cleanup over there. And we can tell he's pretty pissed that it was pretty unlucky. But we have a barrel as well. So uh, against bait, I think you're pretty good. You have um, Baby D, you have your bandits and your stuff. So okay, the, the key I would say in this matchup is in single elixir, you have to try to pressure, right? You need to know uh, what, what building does he have and what is his uh, ground troop. So he already displayed that he played a knight. So I, I wanted the battle ram to force out his building. I wanted to know what building he has. That way we can see whether we can mega knight in the back or not. So the key over here, I believe, um, was a push here in single elixir. The, yeah, he used his knight over here, so I know that he might try to barrel after this. So we want to block the front, but unlike, uh, unfortunately for me, he went on the other lane. But no matter what, uh, we still played our Mega Knight because we know that that was his only ground tank. So we try to handle the barrel. We could have delayed, delayed that barrel to handle both, but I didn't want to take the risk. So over here, he had no more ground tank, so he didn't have elixir for his building as well because he was using an Inferno Tower. So over here, we did massive damage. That was very key. To know that in single elixir they don't cycle as fast, but in double elixir he is very possible that he can get back to his knight because he's cycling one two elixir cards. All right, so we did a uh, massive damage there. One one three six. Now his tower, and that was still pretty healthy. So you most probably always want to try to save your barbarian barrel for his goblin barrel, and then uh, for his scaly barrel you'll try to defend with baby D or something else, whether it's a musketeer early or or some other stuff. But of course that is um, the ideal situation, sometimes it doesn't get too ideal, his princesses start to stack up, you have to use your barb barrel in front, then go ahead and use it. You can use a musketeer and a bandit to clean up, the bar to clean up his goblin barrel as well. So don't be so fixated of just saving your barbarian barrel for his goblin barrel. Because sometimes if you do that, um, the other stuff in front will actually do a lot of damage. The poison was supposed to be for the dark goblin, but we got lucky. So on, on stream when we were playing this, we said uh, it was a great prediction. But okay, so we, we knew that a, a double elixir is going to be very hard for us to get damage, which we will see throughout um, the next few minutes. That it was almost impossible. So uh, the way that I was going to win, I was thinking about the lightning uh, the poison cycle already. Because I know that he has a building for sure in this deck. They do have a building. And we're gonna just try our best to defend. The Scully Barrels would most probably always get death damage unless you are really early with your Musketeer. But I feel like at this point I didn't have to predict anything, right? I could. The uh, Poison took a damage, uh, took enough in terms of damage, so we have to. We have to go for three poisons. So this is the first one. And then we do our best to defend. So you can see that he actually can outcycle your barrel. So you have to keep stacking up troops in the back. That's your best way of clearing up his Goblin Barrel. So we're cycling troops in the back, predicting his barrels to come in real soon. We, we play the Royal Ghost just for a bit of pressure because I know he has to defend. So at this point we, are, we don't have our, our barrel in cycle. So we, we decide to go with that. And over there you can see 345, he has to play his knight over there. We're, we're not going with anything crazy, we're not going Mega Knight at a bridge because I know two poisons will do it and my tower is still pretty healthy. The key thing for this, uh, this bait deck is they don't have a big spell. So if your defense is okay, you're taking a little bit of damage, um, death damage here and there, you will survive. You can survive for, uh, for quite a long time. So over here, now I have uh, my bar barrel and cycle, it goes again. So we just handle that and now we know we just need to get back to the next poison. So we keep cycling troops in the back. Uh, Scally Barrel is not gonna kill me, that one was pretty okay, so we decide to block the front, we go with the Baby D just to get back the poison, and we get the poison done, and then we have Bob Barrel back in cycle just in case it doesn't take it in time. Alright, so I, I think the key that won me this game is actually the Mega Knight and Single Elixir, because in Double Elixir it's gonna get pretty rough, especially if he has an Inferno Tower, because you have no reset for that Inferno. So once they are out of cycle with their ground troops, that's when you can go in. Alright, we'll see you guys in the next, the next replay. Okay, so in this replay we'll be playing against Royal Hawk's Magic Archer. So it looks like a pretty decent matchup for us because we have Mega Knight, we have Royal Goats, and this all have Splash against his Royal Hawks. 
So he only has Magic Archer, so that's why we're saving our poison for. The other thing is also to watch out if they have a heal spirit. That's when you gotta try to get your Barbarian Barrel on that. But because they're playing a faster cycle deck, sometimes they'll not be in cycle, sometimes you'll get the heal up. But that's gonna be okay. Okay, so we cycle in the back here, the Musketeer. Okay, over here he gives us crazy, crazy value because he doesn't expect that we're playing a Mega Knight in this deck. So we get a nice value. So this is also very important. Now that we know his mini Pekka is not in cycle, he's going with that. We go with pressure in the other lane because I know he has to defend us. So he decides to defend the right side. We throw in the extra barrel. So he has to defend either the right or the left. So he chooses to defend the left. So he takes a lot of damage on the right. And then we can just clean up with a bandit over here. Okay, so basically that was that is a uh, really in poison range. So again, uh, we're gonna speed things up a bit because I think we're, we're playing uh, pretty much a lot of defense now. Because once uh, the tower is in poison range, there is no need to try to go crazy and try to go on offense. And in the end, that's when people choke. So again, uh, we'll see here. We're just saving our poisons for the MA. So in this replay and the other replay, I feel like both my games are won in single elixir. That's when you you can be aggressive, especially when the Royal Hawks and then you get a nice Mega Knight jump on the first one. Because they, they won't expect, uh, people can send Royal Hawks in first play, and then if you have a Mega Knight, that's when you can try to have... Because you're going to have a 2 Elixir lead over there, right? So over here, we're just playing a lot of defense. Okay, again, we see the uh, we see the MA, we're just poisoning, we're playing defense. As long as um, we keep up the solid defense, we're going to be fine. But we're not going to use Mega Knights, right? We don't really want to use Mega Knights because we're, uh, we're okay taking damage here and there. Because if you play Mega Knight, it's a 7 Elixir Commitment, and then he could rush you opposite lane with some mini Pekka stuff. Alright, so that's how we do it. And I'll see you guys in the next replays. We're going to show two of them, and it's going to be against Pekka Ram. So against Pekka Ram, I think it's uh, not as easy as a matchup, because Pekka beats Mega Knight, of course. So what the overall strategy was uh, for me to try to beat Pekka Ram is, you got to save your Mega Knight for their Pekka, but you got to fight on your side of the arena. So do not use do not use your Mega Knight for all the small troops like uh, Bandit or Ghost or whatever else. So you always have to try to save it. Of course, that's the ideal situation. It's not that easy to get that, but let's see um, how we do it. And if your opponent decides to pack in the back, that's when you try to rush opposite if you can. In double elixir, you have enough elixir for the Mega Knight. Okay, so over here you can see uh, we're just playing. Uh, we decide to cycle the Baby D because I don't want to leak too much elixir. So we cycle the Baby D and then we throw the barrel. Over here we decide uh, not to go with the poison even though it might seem like a good play because we're not full yet. So again we just cycle the bandit in the back. We're just playing uh, very passively. We're gonna wait for him to make a mistake. So over here goes with the ghost and then we're gonna play our ghost early because if uh, the ghost goes back into the ghost form then it's just gonna be ghost on ghost. Okay so over here was um, his first mistake. He didn't have enough uh, troops in hand. He had two spells which he didn't cycle. So over here he goes with the packer right? And then uh, he used his Battle Ram on our Royal Ghost. So now we know that he used his Battle Ram and he used his Pekka, so he can't really punish us. So we cycle in the back here, we, we are ready to defend both lanes in case he decides to do that. Thankfully he plays his Magic Archer, so over here we get nice value. So the, the, key, the key is this part over here, when he doesn't have his Pekka in Psycho, that's when you can try to go aggressive. So we go with a Bandit as well behind us. So over here we're up an Elixir, so we take out that and then that's it, that's almost Tower, if not Tower. So when he doesn't have his Pekka in Cycle, that's when you can go aggressive. Alright, so over here, we managed to take his tower because he played his Pekka on, on one of our troops. So you should never, never, never be the one that uses um, your, your your ground troop first, like um, the Mega Knight first. So always save your Mega Knight for his Pekka, because if you Mega Knight first and he Pekkas your Mega Knight, then you have to deal with a Pekka counter push. So that is the ideal situation. I understand in the real game, it's not that easy to get this ideal situation. But uh, yeah, it can be done. Okay, so over here, basically, again, we're just cycling, right? So we, we're not going to play our Mega Knight immediately, because in case he rush us with uh, more than two or three troops in the opposite lane, that is when we will use our Mega Knight on the opposite lane. So over here, we'll see the battle ram coming. Again, we're, we're pretty okay to take the charge, and we just use two Elixir to defend that, to defend the rest of the buff. So over here, we didn't... We don't, not too bothered, right? Because 20 something seconds left, we know. So this is the situation that I'm talking about, right? If you use your Mega Knight first, the Pekka kills it with the help of the Princess Tower. You're gonna face a very big counter push, as you can see, but thankfully the time is almost up. So that's it. Uh, we just have to defend this push. Uh, we can see that we're gonna kite the Pekka. And now we'll just take a bit of damage left and right, and then the time's gonna help us here. Alright, so in, uh, the only tip that I'll give you is never, never play your Mega Knight as, um, as a ground troop first. 
unless it's on your side of the arena and you really need it like if he plays a ghost bandit and a ram then of course the mega knight gets value there then that, that, that's fine all right okay so the other replay that i will share okay let's see over here there's this one again uh, this time we're using the skelly dragons because it's max on the main account all right so we'll see you guys there when in the replay all right welcome back Okay, we're gonna go in two times speed here. The, the overall game plan is the same, though, just that um, for Skelly Dragons, you can split them. That, that's not too much difference. Okay, so it goes Bandit at the bridge, really testing the old man's reaction here. Luckily, we get it down in time. So he, he goes with his ram first. So that is when um, I know that we can actually use um, dragons to defend. Because your ground troops are gonna be very important in such matchups. So if you can use your air troops to defend it, um, just use them. Okay, he goes with the ghost again. So basically we're playing very patient, so in this, uh, this one is a bit different from the previous one. So we're playing a bit patient here. When he's cycling, we're cycling, we go with the ghost high to make sure that... Okay, he goes with the P.E.K.K.A here, right? So he goes aggressive, so this time we go with the Mega Knight. So he's fighting on my side of the arena, we don't have to worry about his P.E.K.K.A and that's fine. We go with the Dragons, he goes with the Zap, we go with the additional barrel not to take too many buff hits, so that's fine. Again, we play our bandit for the go, so very much I'm um, just reacting to what he's done, what he's doing. We're just waiting for him to make the mistake. Whether he cycles his Pekka in the back or not, we will see soon. Okay, goes again high on the bandit. That's when he cycles his Pekka in the back, that's when we go all in. Look at that. Uh, when I have Elixir, I just play everything down. Okay, and then that's when in double Elixir, we get enough Elixir back to have the Mega Knight for the Pekka. But you see his tower is already gone. So that, that's what you gotta do. When he plays the Pekka, you gotta rush all in opposite lane, like all 10 elixir, and then if you have more, just keep using them. So over here we're going poison on defense, we're anticipating the, the MA and the electro is and whatnot. So over here we go with that. Again, uh, you can see the ram, we just uh, cycle a buff barrel there, and that's it. So that's the blueprint, how to beat Pekka Ram. Alright, I hope you guys like uh, the series, and don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps me a lot as a content creator. And I'll see you guys in my next video, right? Peace out guys.